my experience with paralysis was not just physical. For all eight semesters, well, seven and a half, my college life was a game of survival. By preempting all the worst case scenarios, I could stay five steps ahead of uncertainty and shield myself from disappointment. With every success, like transferring to Barnard, came a growing fear that any misstep, like a bad grade or a job rejection, would knock me off my envisioned path to success and prestige and negate all my hard work. For so long, I mistook this as just part of general college student stress. And if I hadn't gone on Reddit, I wouldn't have known that this mindset had a name of its own. Catastrophic thinking, or what I call cat thinking, is a cognitive distortion where we overestimate the likelihood of a negative event and underestimate our ability to react to it, leading to a paralyzing, paralyzing sense of doom. Now, you guys might be thinking, mm, this sounds familiar, and so I'd be surprised if someone here hasn't gone through this to some extent. I'll be sharing my story on how cat thinking negatively impacted my mental and physical health and how I'm currently working to dismantle it so that you can do the same. But first, how do we even distinguish between healthy stress and cat thinking when we don't even know we're caught in it? Unblurring your line between these two seemingly overlapping states is the first step to overcoming this thought pattern. Productive stress, which is usually short-term and task-centric, puts us in a position where we genuinely accept setbacks as opportunities for growth. However, cat thinking pushes us to overestimate and dwell over the potential negative impact of an anticipated event on our life. Rather than helping us view setbacks as temporary things we can overcome, cat thinking convinces us that one misstep will derail our entire future. However, a lot of people predict doom and gloom as a motivator for success. And so you might be wondering, if trespassing my line from, cat, from healthy stress to cat thinking got me this far in life, why let it go? And you see, that's what I thought as well. But the truth is, cat thinking, especially when it drives self-harm, is a counterproductive approach to success. I believe and still believe that cat thinking fueled all my achievements and hard work. It brought me to the US, to Barnard, to this room. And so for the last three years, I held its hand so tightly but this made me unable to adapt to change and drove me to extreme lengths to punish myself for any missteps. I would bang my head on the wall until my nose bled and engage in public incidents of self-harm for every low grade. And upon transferring to Barnard, obsessively prayed each night for an internship in exchange for half my life. When my mom told me last year that my Chinese Zodiac career prediction wasn't looking too good, I told her I'd willingly trade everything else, including my health, for a better prediction. And I truly meant it, all of it, down to the very last nerve, as I genuinely could not see a future for myself if I didn't tick these boxes. Upon realizing that it was getting too much, I was way too deep in to find my way out, let alone verbalize what was happening in my mind. And poetically enough, the day after I received an offer from the New York Times, I woke up and could no longer move a single part of my body. On March 5th, 2023, I was rushed to the hospital due to a sudden total loss in nerve, motor, and organ function from the waist down and spent two months in acute rehabilitation, relearning movements I once took for granted. Typing on a laptop, playing the piano, kicking a ball, sitting, standing, walking, I couldn't even pee. But despite being bedridden, for the first time in years, I felt this overwhelming wave of mental liberation where missed exams and the job I so fervently prayed for all faded into irrelevance. My physical breakdown was a manifestation of the mental paralysis I was experiencing, and this jarring wake-up call forced me to confront a sobering truth. That scaring myself into success was unsustainable and put me in a far worse predicament than anything I'd imagined. Like many autoimmune disorders, my condition is intricately linked with extreme stress, among other factors, and is lifelong and recurring. However, I'm grateful for the second chance at life to recalibrate how I deal with stress and uncertainty. While I value my quick recovery, it's brought a return to normalcy and, to my mom's frustration, occasional slides back into cat thinking. But over time, I realized that mental health recovery comes in unpredictable waves. Being aware of our harmful thought patterns doesn't entirely shield us from their pull, but it makes it easier to forgive ourselves for them. If there's a difference between then and now, for one, I stopped dedicating my life to chasing straight A's, but more so I've come to realize the value of intercepting my cat thoughts before they spiral into harmful behaviors, and I urge you to do the same. 
After understanding the dangers of crossing your line from healthy stress to cat thinking, the last and hardest step is to turn awareness into action. Once you realize your cat thinking, there are multiple intervention points. When a thought first comes to mind, I question its validity and ask myself, is this a definite conclusion? Is there evidence? Are there other possibilities? Is this thought grounded in fact and reality or in emotion? And if the latter, what deeper fears and insecurities might be driving it? And then I move on to work with the thought itself. I treat these thoughts like pop-up ads for my anxiety and tell myself to switch the channel to move my brain out of its stress response. I also talk to myself like I would to a friend with the same issues, as we're all often kinder and more objective to people we love than ourselves. If it becomes a struggle doing this alone, seek help from the right family member, the right friend, the right therapist. It's a sad reality that my experience mirrors a wider narrative shared by students at Barnard and beyond, where a fear of failure drives us towards crippling anxiety, depression, and self-destructive self habits. Cat thinking is dangerous for your mental and physical health, and it's so important that you take action before it negatively impacts your well-being like it did for me. In a society so obsessed with chasing the next big win, it's so daunting to pause and question the sustainability of how we approach success. And so addressing cat thinking really requires a deep level of self-awareness, vulnerability, and readiness for uncomfortable conversations with yourself. But small steps at the individual level can ladder up to big changes in how we collectively reach our goals as students and beyond. I hope you found the cat puns bearable, and I look forward to a future where dismantling negative thought patterns like cat thinking become inherent to our framework for achieving success. Thank you.